Welcome to the Crankshack 1.0. It's an updated ver version of the Porta Potty, which got version 2.0, but in the Crankshack, it's got more peaks, more alleys, more stash room, and frankly, a better layout than the Porta Potty. It definitely has some room for beef up improvements, which will be covered later on in the video, but for now, we're going to go over what the overall layout looks like. There are not many deployables in this because frankly I hate when, base, when videos have deployables laid out everywhere because I want to choose my own deployable locations and how I want to do it. So let's get it started. I want to start out here at the TC. There's no doors on the external TCs because you know how to door an external TC at this point if you're watching a build video hopefully. So as we run inside we have our airlock. Now I didn't build on a perfectly smooth surface, surface, so these things are going to happen. I could have fixed it. I left it like this so you can see this happens. You can fix it. You cannot fix it. In game, 2C4, 4 rockets is a lot of explo to fix that little mistake. So you just have one peak there instead of two. Coming inside, you have a nice spacious airlock one. Airlock one here. You have vision over there. Partial vision over there. But it's nice and spacious. You can have peaks in here in case you get breached to fight out of here. Or you can have lockers here so you can grab kits and get out on the move. Coming in, we have two fences. Because if somebody is raiding in, blows both the doors, and they get to here, there is a turret waiting for them when they come around with dual fences for them to have to blow out to get around the turret. As we rotate around to the right, the right, left, and back are all identical. Double fence. I forgot embrasures on this one. But it's the same layout. These also have metal barricades on top so that those annoying grubs can't jump into your base. Along around, you could have your large furnaces outside cooking and piped in, or you could have bubblers or horses, whatever you please. This is the same as the last one, and this is the same as the last two. Coming inside. We have another peak to see out for fights. Small box there gives you a little bit of boost so you can crash down and see out better. Down below, you would have your oil refinery, bubble as we call it. Open this door here. That door is facing the wrong way. But opening the door creates an airlock either way. Same with the other door. I have a double airlock. Super nice. Getting ready. They blow this door off. Open those two up. They now have to blow two more doors to get in. Again, we have window peaks out there, and not from down there, but from up here. And we'll start at the bottom and work our way up so this door is closed. And you come in here, open the door, and you go down, down. You can put a shotgun trap, boxes, or electrical furnaces under your stairs. As I said, multiple uses for area and space, so I don't like to bombard people with deployable choices. You have three doors here. And it's just a simple wraparound two by two. It gets us to our TC. You would probably half wall and have your seven to eight boxes in here, depending on if you have the barrel DLC. Tier three bags. But then up above, you can get three, six, nine. 12 more boxes and or barrels of storage up there. You would probably put half walls in between each of these for more secure so you can't blow top down to get to everything. Or if you blow top down with C4, you would only get to part of it. If you blow top down with rockets, you can't get to everything. So heading back up. You can go up here. So this creates a airlock situation. the below if you have building materials on you you can't really do anything but you get the point 
You're blocking them from going down at that point. They can go down now. They will have your code. They can't get in. And coming over here, we have our second loot room. You can put locker T2 here, locker T2 here. You can put workbenches in any of these places. You can put furnaces, etc. Up above here, I would suggest opening all of these up so we can see what we have. We have loot room boxes. You can put your boxes up here, have them all piped together. One drop box out there, drop it, pipe it all the way through. Boom, boom, boom. Simple, easy, everything stocked. It's an open concept, so it's easy and quick to get around to. You also drop down here and you have full shooting floor access into your compound if you're getting raided. Going up. Up is this way. So they have to blow all garage doors to find out how to get up. You have storage there. There, there. So you have four boxes below with barrels, four boxes at top, on top with barrels. So you have eight there, eight there, and eight there. And again, you can make these into bedrooms. You could put a bag in here. You can put a locker in here. You can do whatever you want with however you want to lay it out. Um, I have this open right now. You could easily make it a wraparound and make people so they have to choose which way to go and then also to put planners if you want an inside garden this would be an ideal place to do a dual planner layout so you could have stacked planner boxes in here whatever you want to have on this floor that's floor three moving to four floor floor four we have our shooting floor it's just a simple run around shooting floor you have all your window peaks for Dave and heli Door here, garage door here, garage door here. That just prevents them um, from being able to shoot as you're trying to go up in a counter situation. It's also another layer. I would actually put garage doors all around here too, just for protection. One more layer up, garage door. And we are on our roof. The roof has the nasty little peaks, so you can see down below in all directions. And if you want to, there would be enough space here to put enough solar panels so that you could power your entire base in case you want to lay low and not have a wind turbine on top of you making a giant target. So all in all, this base would easily house four to six players. You could have multiple bedrooms, you could have multiple um, storage, you have auto sort, you have your furnaces, you put your furnaces on shelves, it takes up less space. You could also have an indoor garden in this. Lastly, one of the cool things about it is additional bedroom space. So if they're coming from one side and breach one side, but not the other, three of the four sides have these window or have these bedrooms, put a bed, put a locker, Put a box. You now have shooting floors. Your turret's covering you. So if they breach the front, you have turret coverage. On top of the turret coverage, though, if they try to run by the turret, you have peaks on both sides. One last fly around. Oh, that tickled. So our upkeep cost on our externals is cheap. It's 849 stone, 151 frags. And as we go to the inside, for upkeep cost, we're at 12,986 stone, so 13,000 stone, 3,000 frags. I strongly suggest that amount, you pipe it in because you're at two, three rows of upkeep for a day, so you're probably not going to get more than 27 hours. But if we upkeep, upgrade the entire core to metal we're now at 11,616 metal which isn't that bad once you sit down and think about it it's about 20 nodes a day so that's without a T with a T you're at 10 12 nodes a day roughly 
and you have your upkeep for the day. So very affordable, especially if you're playing with a large group. Um, that cost can obviously change depending on additional garage doors, armored doors, armored core, different things like that. Um, but overall, if you're looking for a solid base that's functional, has enough space to move around, is defendable in a raid, and will work in a Layla situation, this is definitely a viable option. I would not suggest this base that upgraded the doors to armored. I would not suggest this base if you're on a heavily populated Zerg style server because it's going to get pounded and if they go through the side here they're two walls into core. So at max you're 16 rockets there, 8 rockets there. Um, you can obviously put some honeycomb in here and add to that rate cost but 24 rockets is not an extreme number but it is still a uh, chunky number to get to core in the center. So that is the base tour. If you have any questions, let me know. I will release the footprint and how-to guide on this tour if the video gets over five likes. Let's set the bar low and see if we can do it. Everybody have a good day.